what's going on guys and in today's video i want to share with you how to make your next game easier than ever before so there's a strategy that we've always been using as athletes throughout our entire career but we were never really aware of it and we never really used it intentionally so i'm going to share with you guys what that strategy is which strategy that you've used in the past and how to intentionally use it instead of just letting things happen by chance. So I want to tell you a quick story. My freshman year in college, I show up uh, at a division one school and I'm thinking, and I'm building up all of these stories in my head about how good the competition's going to be, what the competition's going to look like, how fast the game's going to be, how strong the guys on the field are going to be. And I'm playing all of these scenarios out in my head and I, get to campus, I get to my first game, and we have an inner squad, you know, a couple weeks into school, because they give you a little bit of time to get settled in, they give you a little time to, uh, you know, maybe you have some practices, every school is a little bit different, um, you get to meet the coaches, you get to meet the teammates, all that good stuff, so uh, we get to our first inner squad a couple weeks into the school year, I'm a freshman, right, I had a good college career, I understood where exactly I was going. I knew I had a chance to play as a freshman, but you play all of these scenarios in your head about um, you know, what needs to happen in order for you to start, what needs to happen in order for the coach to understand that you're capable of starting at that level, so on and so forth, right? So you're building up all of these scenarios in, we, in our head, and you guys have done that yourselves as athletes, right? Going from one level to the next. But something interesting happens, right? When you go from one level to the next level, what happens? When you get to that next level, the game's a little bit faster. The game's a little bit more explosive. And this applies to all sports. The game just happens that much quicker, right? And at the professional level, it happens the quickest. So as a freshman, I get into my first inner squad. So an inner squad, you're just playing against your own team. I get into my first inner squad and I step into the batter's box and all of a sudden you got a lefty who's throwing low 90s, whatever it is, right? And I step into the batter's box and I'm saying, okay, wow, this game is fast. This game's really moving. And you get into the box and you see 90 miles an hour, 92 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour, right? And the breaking pitches have even more break to them. But an interesting thing happens. After you see it once, after you see it twice, after you see it three, four, five times, you start to get used to it. And then obviously the more you see it, the more used to it that you get. Think about when you were eight or nine years old as an athlete, and then you went to another level, and then you, know, you were 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old, and you look back, you imagine what it was like when you were a young boy or girl, depending on who's watching this, you look back and you think, man, I'm so much better now than I was then, right? You can see how you've progressed. You can see how you've gotten quicker. You can see how you've gotten faster. You can see how you've gotten stronger. You can see how your skills have developed. But there's an interesting thing that happens and we've all done it, but we haven't done it intentionally. And that's the purpose of this video is to give you this strategy so that you can use it intentionally. And what that is, it's our threshold of control. Our threshold of control. So our threshold of control is how much we can put up with. Our threshold of control is how much stress we can put up with. So depending on what sport you play, there's a, a level of stress that comes with pushing yourself and exerting yourself and being exposed to a higher level of play. There's a certain level of stress, right? Physically, there's a level of stress, right? Exerting yourself, exerting more energy. Mentally, there's another level of stress. Emotionally, there's another, another level of stress, right? If I took a 12 year old and put him into a professional game, they would be completely overwhelmed physically, mentally, emotionally, and they wouldn't have any success, right? Now, I know someone's going to make the argument, make the joke of, oh, prodigy and this and that. But the purpose of understanding your threshold of control is understanding the stressors for you specifically as an athlete. So what are the stressors that impact your game the most? Is it the speed of the game? Is it coaches? Is it teammates? 
Is it the ability to execute your skills during the game? Is it that you're trying to win, that you're trying to compete, that you're trying to dominate? What is the specific stressor for you? Understanding your threshold of control. What is the specific stressor for you? And how can you use that? How can you use that information intentionally to ensure that when you step onto the playing field, when you step onto the court, when you step onto the mat, that you know deep down that you've worked on this. So I'll, I'll give you an example of how this works, okay? So what we do typically as athletes is we move from one level to the next level and we say, okay, I'm at a higher level. I've got to have some time to adjust. I got to have some time to adapt. Well, what if you wanted to shorten that learning curve? What if you wanted to make that adjustment quicker? What if you wanted to get used to the speed of the game even faster? Well, you can intentionally put more stress on yourself. But the key, there's a, there's a key to this thing that I want you guys to understand is that there is a level of awareness that needs to happen for each athlete, okay? So what what is the stress that is coming on me as an athlete? What are the things that stress me, right? What are the things that stress me physically as an athlete? What are the specific things that stress me mentally? What are the specific things that stress me physically, mentally, and emotionally, right? So I'm trying to hit on all three of those components. I'm trying to hit on all three of those factors. And you might be thinking, how do you put this into play? How do you actually do this? Well, how you actually do this is identify one of those areas, physically, mentally, emotionally, right? Then in your practice, the goal is to increase your threshold of control by forcing yourself, stressing yourself to reach beyond what you're comfortable doing. So it's a way to take your practice, be more intentional with your practice for you specifically. But there's an interesting thing here. There's an interesting thing because I know I'm going to get a lot of kickback and people are going to say, well, you know, my team practices really fast and my, my team practices this way and my team practices that way. There was an interesting study done and they identified the athletes as good, great, and excellent. Good, great, excellent. Okay. Obviously the excellent is the highest level. The great is the great players. The good is okay. You're okay. You're good. And the biggest factor between the good, the great, and the excellent was not the practices that they did with the coach. It was not the mentors necessarily that they were working with or anything like that. The, the biggest differentiator between these three was actually the time that they put in on their own. The time that they put in with the information, the material that their coaches gave them and they implemented on their own. They practiced it on their own. They worked on it on their own. That was the biggest differentiator, working on it on your own. So how does this tie into your threshold of control? Well, it ties into your threshold of control because it's crucial. It's crucial to identify what factor impacts you as an athlete the most. What is the stressor that takes away from my performance the most? What is the thing? What is the variable that impacts me the most? And every athlete is different. Every athlete is different right? Some are more impacted by what the coach is saying. Some are more impacted by what their teammates are saying. Some are more impacted by the ability to develop skills or, or execute their skills during the game. Or some are more impacted by just the simple will to win, the, encur the joy to win, the encouragement to win. So identify, identify specifically what it is that you need to work on, what you need to improve, right? And you want to improve your threshold of control by intentionally making it more stressful for yourself in practices. So the whole goal is to improve your, your threshold of control, which is the amount of stress that you can take during a game situation. And it's, it's a very simple principle. It's a very simple concept. All it is, is, is understanding, okay, if I look back to where I was two years ago, right? playing at this level two years ago. And here I am today. Hopefully every single person watching this has improved. Here's where I was two years ago. Here's where I am today. Hopefully I've, I've, I've improved, right? The game 
the tournaments, the matches, if I went back to where I was two years ago, this would seem like a walk in the park. This would seem like a piece of cake. This would seem so easy two years ago. Where I am today, how, how can I have that same feeling? How can I have that same thought process instead of waiting two years from now? How can I have this same thought process today? How can I get to this point today instead of waiting and saying to myself, okay, I'll just wait till I get better or I'll just have to adapt. It's intentionally forcing yourself. It's intentionally stressing yourself so that today feels like it would two years ago, making it easier, making it slower, making you be able to process information on a much simpler level. So improving your threshold of control is intentionally putting stress on yourself, intentionally putting yourself in a difficult situation in practice. And it's about specifically what you need to work on, what stresses you in a game and intentionally putting that stress on yourself so that when it does come to a game scenario, when it does come to a game situation, it seems like nothing, right? A, a perfect example is baseball, right? The speed of the game in baseball, okay? When you move from one level to the next, what usually happens is that the pitching gets a little bit faster, the breaking pitches get a little bit uh, more bite onto it. So if you can expose yourself to faster speeds, if you can expose yourself to uh, greater breaking pitches, if you can expose yourself to a faster game, then all of a sudden when you get to the next level, then you're able to deal with that same situation. But what can you do specifically for your sport? And you're, you're only going to be limited by your creativity. You're only going to be limited by what you can think of in terms of, okay, this is the area I need to work on and this is how I need to work on it. I'm not here to give you all of the drills. I'm not here to give you all of the specific things that you need to work on in your sport. I'm here to give you the principle, the concept to intentionally improve your threshold of control instead of waiting until you get to the next level, instead of waiting till you play against better competition, but intentionally going out and practicing it by yourself. So I hope that information helps. I hope you go out and just try it, just test it out. How can you intentionally put stress on yourself, more stress than you're used to, so that when you come to a game situation, when you come to a match, it seems like a walk in the park. So simple principle, but we do it unintentionally. My purpose, my goal for this video is to help you do it intentionally so that your progress is much faster instead of waiting six months, a year, two years to get to that next level. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, please smash that subscribe button down below and leave your questions in the comment section because that's the inspiration behind these videos to help serve you guys specifically with what you're struggling with. And if you'd like to take things a step further, check the links in the description below. If you're interested in our coaching, if you're interested in checking me out on other platforms and connecting with me there, if you're interested in some of our other free training, definitely check it out in the description below. And I will see you guys on the next video.